Hi, I'm Renarda Clanton Moyd. I'm a communications specialist with the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. During this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, it was once said, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Cumberland County Schools Career and Technical Education Program does just that. Each day, they provide students with foundational skills and career-related courses to prepare them to compete in a global economy as world-class workers and citizens. And after this break, we'll talk with administrators from the Cumberland County Schools Career and Technical Education Department about how the program is impacting the lives of our students on this edition of Get Connected. I'm a single mother of two kids. I work a lot. He do miss a lot. He dropped off for a whole month. Sometimes I would talk to him and he wouldn't even turn around and look at me. I just get frustrated because in any way that I talk to him, it just doesn't go through his head. I didn't give up because there's always hope. Give your teen the boost they need to graduate. Call 1-877-4-A-KID or join us at boostup.org for tips and advice. Gov. Again, thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected, where we're talking with Chip Lucas, the Executive Director of Cumberland County Schools Career and Technical Education Program, and Pam Gibson, the Coordinator of College Tech Prep. Chip, Pam, welcome. Thank you, Renarda. Glad to be here. Thanks. Hey. Wonderful to be here. You know what? I've had you all on the radio program before, but never on TV, so this is going to be great. Okay? You ready? <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. Buckle up. Let's go. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Now, how long have you guys been in CTE? You've been working with this program for about how long? Actually, I've been with CTE for 12 years. Uh, I started as a marketing education teacher in the schools oh, wow. and then became a career development coordinator and have now been at Central Services in CTE for now six years. Oh, great. And I, I take it you enjoy what you I do. I do love my job. All right, all right. <laughs> you say with a smile. I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Pam, how long have you been with the well, program? Well, this is actually my ninth year with career and technical education, um, all, the, all of those years at Central Services. But before that, I was a high school counselor at uh, Westover High School, actually. Mm, that's great. That is great. All right. Well, I'm glad to have you guys with me, as I said earlier. And I remember just kind of thinking, <laughs> there was a time, and I'm sure when you all were coming through, where this program was called Vocational Ed. Was mm -hmm. it not? It was. Okay. So things did change. Yes. From whence I started, it has become <laughs> okay. Vocational Education to Workforce Development Education, mm -hmm. and currently now Career and Technical Education. Okay. Of course, that we're not your father's shop class or your mother's home ec class. Uh, we do now have specialized areas. We still have those trades areas like uh, automotive technology mm -hmm. and uh, collision repair, carpentry. Things, carpentry, carpentry, things of that nature. But now in career and technical education, we have more specialized programs available like health sciences and criminal justice, Ooh. just to name a couple. Now, where was all of this when I was coming along? I mean, like culinary arts. I mean, and you know, that's really big now. And um, what is it, horticulture? Yes. I know the horticulture programs, I've, I've had the opportunity to go and, you know, visit some of those programs. It's really, very, they seem very nice, and the students really seem to know what they're I doing. I would have loved these opportunities when I was in high school. It, it's, it's really amazing how CTE has evolved into such specialized course opportunities. I mean, these kids get great opportunities in high school. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you all think that this evolution has occurred? I think it deals with the workforce trends. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the baby boomers are, are retiring and we're going right. to need replacements for those uh, jobs that require high skills and they are in high demand. 
So we look at those workforce trends and try to design our programs around those workforce needs. And what would you say at this point are some of our current, the, the current workforce trends? Well, Chip mentioned what's being referred to as the skills gap. Okay, with, with that. Well, with your baby boomer population retiring out, the industries are very concerned right now that there's not going to be a skilled workforce ready to replace them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those are in some of the trades areas, that, that the traditional vocational areas that you think of. But there's also a high demand right now in all areas of health sciences, health care, um, accounting, auditing, computer systems um, support. The, those are some, some of the really high demand areas and so we try to offer courses in the high school that would help prepare students to meet those, those workforce demands. That's all right. Now, if a parent is sitting watching or a grandparent's watching and they're thinking to themselves, you know, my child would really fit into that. What, what could that parent or grandparent tell the child or share with the child in order to get them to consider choosing CTE as an option? Well, what they can do is, uh, of course, um, talk with uh, them about the offerings that are available in the schools. We put out a course selection guide every year that lists all wow. of the career and technical education programs and courses. Okay. We teach over a hundred courses in the career and technical education program, so we have a wide array of, of selections there. Um, guidance counselors know about our program as well as career and technical education facilitators within, within the schools that promote our programs. So, Parents can, can learn from those, from those people okay. in our schools. And it's just a matter of picking up the telephone and calling? Mm -hmm. And they could call CTE, the CTE program? They could call program. our CTE program, certainly. and we could certainly direct them to the, a specific school if they're within an atten attendance area mm -hmm. where some of those programs are offered. That's good, that's good. And you mentioned a course guide. When does the course guide come out? The course guide should be coming out um, this month or next month. And that is mm -hmm. the Cumberland County Schools High Schools Course Selection Guide that lists all of the programs, uh, all of the programs within the Cumberland County Schools, not just the Career and Technical Education program, but all the courses. So CTE is part of that course selection guide process. Pretty you big what, part. A big part. <laughs> now let me ask you this, and just in practical terms, if you are a student and you have a particular talent in something, mm -hmm. I mean, w as from the counselor's standpoint and, you know, just in what you all do uh, daily, is that where you would kind of guide the student? Talk to me about that. Right. One of the things we encourage high school students to do is to participate in what we call a concentration, where based on what their interests and abilities and, um, and skills are, mm -hmm choosing a sequence of courses, of CTE courses, that are related to those interests and abilities. So the students can really get a taste of what that career field is like, as well as some, some skills that are gonna prepare them for either post-secondary education or go out into the workforce right after high school. So this is all part of a sequence that we want the, the students to have. And we have so many different courses. They can take something every year, all four years of high school, in, yeah. in their area of interest. Now we don't have everything in every school. But we do have a wide variety of course offerings in all of our 10 traditional schools. And how soon should a student make that decision to be a part of something that's great? In the middle school is when they should start. We have exploratory courses within the middle school. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. by the time they're in the eighth grade, they should be thinking about what kind of plan they want to work towards in the high school where they can achieve one of these concentrations in career and technical education. So they're doing a lot of exploration in the middle mm -hmm. school. And then when they come into the high school, assessing their talents and abilities, interests, so that they can know which path they would like to choose and hopefully they would choose a career in technical education focus. Okay, that's good. Now what would you say are some benefits of taking CTE courses? Well, one of the things I mentioned already is the opportunity to explore and to right. see if this really is the thing for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of parents are familiar with the idea of sending my child off for college and they change their major and they and change, change their, their major, major and, and they change, change their major. <laughs> and, and so this yeah. can give students an opportunity to explore as well as an opportunity to gain some skills that they can carry with them. We've, we've had students many times tell us that they were so much further ahead than their peers when they went on to college because they had already covered some of this material or they had skills that they could take with them mm -hmm. at that, that put them ahead of their, their other students as well as some of the um, 
industry certifications that we're able to provide through our courses as well these are industry recognized credentials wow. that make these students employable that they can get right in high school we also have um, what we refer to as articulated credit students can get credit with the community college for some of their high school courses as well mm, that's they, great that is wonderful now what um, when you all talk to employers what do they say about some of the students who have come through the CTE program? Are they I'm sure they're impressed yes. with them. They are. Some of our students have the opportunity to be in business and industry in an agency or hospital setting in a mm -hmm. clinical internship. And we're hearing that our students are very well prepared by the instructors in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And they're ready to participate in those hands-on activities. Uh, within those experiences. They could be job shadowing experiences or clinical experiences, mm -hmm. um, internship experiences. And uh, our students are representing us well out there in those uh, business industry That's areas. Great. That's mm -hmm. great. Now is, is our program a lot like the others that are across the state? I would think that you all, I mean that this program really shines above all. <laughs> We're pretty proud of our CTE okay. program we, because we do offer um, a very wide variety of courses and different programs. Um, you know, being one of the larger LEAs in the state, uh, we have the opportunity to provide different things with different schools, and and I think we do do a really good job of offering a variety as well as offering things that match the needs of business and industry in this area. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is state curriculum, so we do follow the, the course offerings that the state provides so, so other school systems in the state are able to offer the same courses. But we also have what we call local course option courses which is locally developed curriculum where we can specialize in some things. For example, criminal justice is one of our locally created courses that we offer here in Cumberland County that students might not have the opportunity to do in other state, other, other school systems in the state. Mm -hmm. Um, we've also been implementing some new green technology curriculum and things like oh, that. Oh, tell, tell me about that. That's interesting. <laughs> well, you know, green technology, sustainability is very popular right now. Right. And so what we've done is implemented some new curriculum in one of our academy programs at Douglas Bird High School. So the students will be learning about solar technology, wind turbines, fuel cell technology, sustainability, you know, how to keep our, our earth sustained mm -hmm. and, exactly. and in a good place. Exactly. <laughs> and one portion of that program is earning industry recognized credentials mm -hmm. uh, through a couple of those uh, courses and that just adds to the credibility that CTE does offer certain credentials that are recognized out in industry. For example, nurse aid, mm -hmm. um, serve safe certification which is used in the um, restaurant and lodging mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. um, as well as um, career safe um, certification. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's just several different mm -hmm. uh, industry recognized credentials that uh, really add value to the student's experience while in high school. That's good. Well, you know what, what we're going to do is take a quick break, okay? okay. Um, and when we come back, though, I want to talk with you all about just a list of the programs. I want to mm -hmm. go into to more detail about that. I mean, these sound so interesting. I kind of wish I could go back in time and you know, but anywho, we won't, we won't get into that. But nonetheless, you stick around as well. We'll be right back for more Get Connected. We can all be more energy efficient. It's easy. Use energy saving light bulbs. Energy smart power strips. And turn off electronics and appliances when not in use. <laughs> Learn what you can do today at energy.gov slash tink. Take my hand and start a brand new day. And together as one will start to see some change. Underneath everything we are. Underneath everything we do. We are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united.
In four out of five school shootings, the attacker tells someone about it first. Call 1-866-SPEAK-UP to anonymously report a weapon threat at school. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. Our guests are Chip Lucas, the Executive Director of the Career and Technical Education Program, and Pam Gibson, the Coordinator of College Tech Prep. Pam and Chip, thank you again for coming. We appreciate it. Now, I remember before we went to the break, I told you that I wanted to talk with you a bit about the programs. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about some of the programs. I mean, we touched on a few, but kind of get into a little more detail there. Okay, as we stated earlier, career and technical education is part of the curriculum in Cumberland County Schools secondary education. And within career and technical education, we have eight different program areas uh, to include business, uh, finance, and information technology, um, marketing and entrepreneurship education. Okay. Uh, we have family and consumer sciences education, which is formerly known as home economics. Okay. We also have uh, trade and industrial education technology education, health, uh, sciences, health sciences education, and agriculture. and agricultural ed. Wow. So those are the programs that comprise CTE. Now within those different programs we have courses and those courses are the ones that add up to those about a hundred courses that we offer within the school system. For example in business education we offer Microsoft, IT, Word, PowerPoint, Publisher, Excel, and Access courses, just to name one of the courses within that program area. Okay. So that, that's how it's uh, aligned. In, in agriculture, we have biotechnology, we have horticulture, mm -hmm. um, we have animal science. Yep. I mean, wow. we just have a really broad offering, as we said earlier. That's great. So now, that's just some of, some, some of those. I'm sorry, and I cut you off. Go that's right okay. Ahead. We just have, there again, we can name all 100, but it would take <laughs> it too would long. It would take a while. It would take a while. That's all right. But now if people want to see the all 100, I mean, they could go on the web, correct? We do have our course listing at the mm -hmm. CTE website, okay. uh, at the Cumberland County Schools website, as well as at the College Tech Prep website. Mm -hmm. Okay. We That's do. good. That's good. Now, let me ask this, Pam, and I know this is in your particular area. How does College Tech Prep play into all of this? Well, you remember I mentioned before about concentrations, that when students are going through high school, mm -hmm. we want them to have a CTE concentration in a field of interest. And so the idea behind College Tech Prep is that students would follow that focused concentration or cluster of courses throughout high school with the intent of then taking that to post-secondary education. We want them to make that smooth transition to post-secondary education and be ready for that post-secondary education. I mentioned the articulation agreement before. That's one of the ways we help students make that transition because then they can go right into the community college right. already having earned some credit because of the coursework they did in high school. Mm -hmm. And so really uh, my job is to work within the programs that we have in CTE to educate students about the opportunities post-secondary and what they can do with those courses. Wow, that's a lot. That's it's pretty, you're pretty busy then, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. And um, I'm sure that with that, you, kind of, you work with employers here in the area. Oh, yes. We work with business and industry in this community a lot. They are an important component to what we do in career and technical education and college tech prep because ultimately what we're doing is preparing their future workforce. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to prepare their workforce the way they need it, we have to hear from them what the industry trends are, what their needs are. So they give us guidance, they give us input into our course offerings, our curriculum. And then they in turn also provide what we call work-based learning opportunities for our students, opportunities for the students to take what they're learning in the classroom and see it applied in the real world. Okay. So, and we have a variety of different ways that we do that. So they are a critical component to what we do. Now, it's one tool that I've heard in, in talking about the um, relationship you all have the, with the employer is the work keys assessment. What is that exactly? Well, all of the concentrators, as Pam mentioned earlier, that are a, a senior in high school, mm -hmm. this year, based on a um, state board policy, all those seniors in career and technical education that have that four credit concentration will take the work keys assessment. 
The work keys assessment is a career readiness assessment where students are assessed on three different areas. Uh, we will be focusing on applied mathematics, uh, reading and reading for information, reading for and, information lo and locating information. and locating information. So our students in CTE will be taking this work readiness certificate test to see if they are indeed career ready. You know, we want our students through our programs not only to be college ready, but college and career ready as mm -hmm. well. That's good. That is good. So you're you kind of going all the way around, making sure they're, they're well rounded on all levels. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's good. That's good. And this Work Keys assessment is a tool that's used by business and industry. Um, students taking these three tests that, that Chip mentioned, depending on the score that they receive, they can earn different levels of certificates. And a lot of employers, they are either um, requiring that the students have the certificate, it's called a Career Readiness Certificate, or CRC for short. Mm -hmm. They either are requiring that students have a certain level CRC, or um, applicants, I guess is what I should say, they're requiring applicants to have that, or they're giving preference to applicants that have a certain level of CRC. And this is really something that is growing in business and industry. And so at, since this is something that business and industry expects of our students, then we want to be able to make sure, as Chip said, that they are career ready. And you know, when you mention business and industry, I also think about the community. How can the community get involved? How can, you know, in order to help with the program, how, what, what are some things that the community as well as other business partners and industry partners can do to get involved? Well, we're always looking ways to partner within the community. Uh, as we said earlier, there are opportunities to sponsor students for career shadowing. A one day or half day experience where the student can go into their business or industry and learn about uh, work, workplace uh, preparedness. Uh, also there are field trip opportunities that business and industry can host our students uh, for for a day where they can tour an industry and see what is needed to to, uh, to, uh, to see what's needed within the within the uh, career area that, that they sponsor there at the field trip opportunity as well as um, I'm struggling. That's all right. <laughs> well, we, we, have, we have some internships as well. Some of our business partners are able to provide internship opportunities, which is a little more extensive than just, say, a job shadowing or, or um, a field trip opportunity. We already have um, what we refer to as mentorships or clinicals built into some of our courses, such as the health sciences courses. The students go into the hospitals. They go into the nursing homes. They get clinical experiences there. Our early child education program students go into the daycare centers and they have kind of a mentorship experience right. there. Um, and then we also have advisory boards in our different program areas and so we encourage the business and the community to get involved in our advisory boards to help us make sure that we are preparing the students. One of the things that we also do in career and technical education is we look at those soft skills pieces and we work with students on things like interviewing skills and we talk to them about not just what you need to do to get the job, but what you need to do to keep the job. Right, right. You know, getting along with others, being able to work together in teams, because very few careers these days involve people working in isolation. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is one of the things that we hear from business and industry a lot is these soft skills. They need to be prepared. So we have business partners come in and they will do mock interviews with our students in the classroom. Good, that's good. And you know, and the good thing about it is you see that um, and I hope that rather our business partners who are out there will just call and say, hey, I want to get involved, I want to help, as opposed to you all having to seek out or, you know, go into the community and seek out. And I'm sure you do get a lot of people calling in interested in, in helping. We do, and within the career and technical education student organizations, those are co-curricular activities within those programs. Uh, business partners may serve as judges for some of those competitive mm -hmm. events that students are involved in through, Good. example, health occupations, student organization, um, FBLA student organization, uh, the DECA organization. All of those career um, technical student organizations um, have competitive events and we're always looking for folks that can help students learn about workplace preparedness and um, being ready for a career. 
that's good. Now, I understand that February is a special month for you guys, right? <laughs> CTE month. Ah, okay. <laughs> so now what's going to be going on during um, this month, during February? Well, CTE month is an opportunity for us to highlight CTE, to, to promote the things that we're doing in CTE. And so we have a variety of activities that go on in the schools. Uh, some of our schools do curriculum nights, or they may even do career fairs. They bring in special speakers. Um, we've had some of our high schools where all of the different departments in CTE will set up booths so that the students can come around and see what's going on in their own school, okay. as well as you know, parents are invited to come in and see as well. Good. Career fairs are a big part of that. Yes. Uh, we usually have a focus on job shadowing that month. Mm -hmm. And so there's opportunities for students to be involved in lots of career and technical education activities. That's great. Now, you know, I'm looking at the clock on the wall and I'm seeing where our time is ticking. But do you have any last words, anything that you would like to share with our, our viewers about CTE and what a wonderful program it is? Well, we think CTE is the best kept secret mm. within the school system. I mean, we are preparing students not only for a career, but for college, post-secondary education mm -hmm. as well as training in specific areas. So we feel like that we're just that jewel that students can find their niche and they can know exactly what they want to do uh, when they leave high school. Okay. One of the things that I like to say over and over again is education is workforce development all of education. Ultimately the goal is for our students to go out into the workforce and to contribute to society and you know CTE we know this and we know that that's the goal and that's what we're working towards and we really hope that students take advantage of the opportunities that are available to them. That's great and you all have just a cadre of dedicated employees I mean just to even think of a teacher sharing, you know, um, their work-life experiences with students to help get them to a point where they can go out and, mm -hmm. and survive and take care of the generations to come, you know, is just a wonderful thing. Because in my mind, I think to myself that most teachers go to school to learn how to teach English, math, and mm -hmm. science, or whatever it is, but then to have teachers that go out and they teach our young people you know, how to do life work skills. Culture, how to get, exactly. <laughs> you know, and difference. that's a very good point, actually. A lot of our teachers come from business and industry. Um, so they've had that background where they've actually worked in the industry and they can bring that to the classroom. All right. Okay. Well, you know what? Clock on the wall says I got to go. <laughs> so thanks again for joining me, okay? You got to come back. We will. will. Thank All you. Right. Okay. All right. Well, on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and for giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next.